We're back, joined by one of our favorite people here at Secure Freedom Radio, our regular guest, longtime syndicated columnist and world-class blogger, Diana West. She is also, among other things, a best-selling author several times over, Death of the Grown-Up and American Betrayal, the secret assault on our nation's character being two of her extraordinary contributions to our understanding of the, well, the world that we've come through and the world that we're in. Diana, welcome. As always, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much, Frank. One of your other fellow extraordinary chroniclers of where we have been and what it means for where we are today passed away, I'm sorry to say, earlier this week. He was the extraordinary historian. I think of him as really the historian of the evil empire, Robert Conquest. Share with us your thoughts on him. You you knew him, I'm sure, and certainly followed closely his writings and um, collected works, Diana. But give us an appreciation of this extraordinary human being. Oh, yes, he was extraordinary. I could never put myself in, in his class. He, Robert Conquest, whom I did not get to know, much much to my, my, my lasting regret, I would actually call his brand of history Soviet exterminationism. Because what he did, and this was beginning in the 1960s, he immersed himself in the, the, the boggling scale of murder and tragedy that had been deliberately wrought by the communist regime in Russia and, be, and gave us, first of all, his, his, his history of Stalin's purges, the great purges of his enemies, thousands and thousands and you know, tens of thousands of enemies in the 1930s, called the Great Terror. And it came out in, in, in the late 60s, and no one was even acknowledging the existence of this, this, um, this crime against humanity. No one, it was being glossed over. We were entering into our latest phase of coexistence, uh, detente. And this, this was something that was extremely unwelcome. And indeed, he was um, uh, excoriated for, for his contributions, which, which would continue with, with similar excavations into the killings of the Ukraine terror famine, which, um, and, and, and on with that, the, the Gulag, the Kolyma. Um, he was extraordinary. He was also a wonderful poet. So he was, he was a, and a translator. He was, he was, a, he was an incredibly gifted, brilliant human being and, and left us with such a legacy. He did indeed. And, and, you know, I was thinking as you were saying, the, the boggling scale, it's really hard to imagine, but it makes Hitler's industrial extermination of the Jews and others pale by comparison. I, I guess the only rival to it is that other communist dictator, Mao. But this was really something that I think you're absolutely right, Robert Conquest gave us as an incredibly important insight into totalitarianism run amok. Diana, at the core of much of that totalitarianism was form one form or another of socialism. And you've made very important effort to try to get us to focus on not only the disaster that it has wrought on others around the world, but what is afoot here in America at the moment that seemingly nobody wants to describe as what it is, namely a form of socialism as well. Talk about Chris Matthews and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, for example, on the subject recently. Well, this was this was um, a great moment. I don't know what came over Chris Matthews, but he actually asked the tingling Debbie in Wasserman. his leg, perhaps. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he actually asked Debbie Wasserman Schultz as as chairperson. I suppose we're supposed to say uh, another. Uh, a gift of socialism, of, of the Democratic National Committee, what the difference is between Democrat politics and socialism, between the Democratic Party and the Socialist Party, and she was at a complete loss. So we had actually two very honest, unvarnished moments, a good question and a completely understandable answer. The, the, it's a distinction without a difference. It's, it's differences in tiny little things around the edges, but what the similarities are, and this has been known to socialists through the ages, the similarities are a, a non-constitutional aggression peacefully done on our rights and liberties by replacing our constitutional form of government with a collectivist state-run system. And whether you've got, you've got private you know, the existence of 
of private industry on the side or you have free speech in certain spheres or you have the uh, ability to lie low. It, it doesn't have to be the totalitarian monolith that kills people in order to control people. And I think that in many ways this is the lesson of the Soviet Union. It's not necessary to commit the kind of murder exterminationism that Robert Conquest chronicled in order to have your fist in the neck of the people. And this, this we've been able to see, I believe, take place here. And what, what I did at my website was pull some of the quotations from American Betrayal, which in many ways is a pay-in to Robert Conquest's work, I would add, um, pulling these quotations through the years going back a long time. People think that these developments in our system moving towards socialism are new under Obama. No, this has been going on certainly since the 1930s in a big way when Franklin Roosevelt reorganized the economy with the New Deal, socialized the eco many, many aspects of the economy, received some pushback, of course, and, and this, this is a process, but definitely reoriented inserted the government into the economy, into the lives of the American people in ways that had never been seen before, and it stayed there. A fundamental transformation, you might call it. And interestingly, we don't have time to do it justice today, but one of the newest facets of this, Diana West, it seems to me, is that this uh, so-called degrowth initiative that is now being brooded about and apparently being advanced, as on so many other fronts, by the Obama administration. We'll, we'll visit with you at greater length about this, I hope, next week. In the meantime, folks, I hope you will check out Diana West's terrific website, dianawest.net. Diana, let me turn to Yalta. One of the things that you have very, very closely examined, as I believe did Robert Conquest, was the disaster of that negotiation, the closing days of World War II. I've been given to think, as I've heard more and more and talked about it myself, the comparisons between the Iran deal that President Obama has pursued and Munich, the effort by Neville Chamberlain that came to such a terrible end in World War II. Yalta seems to me to be a more appropriate parallel here because of the disaster that it wrought for millions and millions of people, including many of whom lost their lives, and something that may well be in prospect for this Iran deal. What about that comparison? Is that apt in your view? I think it's very apt in, in, in my view. I think that the common bond here, I think that the commonality between all of these disastrous negotiations is in the very paradigm of democratic leaders, leaders of democratic countries, let's say, sitting down with totalitarian dictatorships of one flavor or another, whether it's the, the religious dictatorship of Iran or the Soviet dictatorship of the Soviet Union. It is never going to work out in such a way as to extend liberty, to, to make deals that will stick, to engineer any kind of peaceful outcome because you are sitting down with people who are trying to take over, seize power, dominate the globe, and there is no dealing with such people around a table. With, with, we've talked about this. There is no parity in having little stacks of paper with sharpened pencils and bottles of water, which is just always the image that comes to mind. This notion that you somehow are equal and you're dealing from equal decks. This, I think, is one of the fundamental flaws in all of these negotiations, and we, we should learn from them. I mean, this is why history to me and, and Robert Conquest's work is, is of such moment. This is nothing about the past. This is about our mistakes every day. And you see that we continue to make and with more doom and gloom and fear and terror ahead. Diana, again, we don't have time to do justice to this. I do just want to take note of the fact that the British government has apparently charged one Adnan Chowdhury a very prominent, very aggressive jihadist in the United Kingdom with providing support for the Islamic State, a group that he has been reportedly associated with as well. That story we will be following closely, I'm sure, among others with you, Diana, in the days ahead. But thank you for both this important retrospective and, as always, bringing us up to the moment uh, as we do face, indeed, the challenges of one form or another, of socialism and totalitarianism more generally. Keep up the great work at dianawest.net, and we'll look forward to talking with you again next week. Arthur Brooks of the American Enterprise Institute joins us to talk about the debate. Will we see the conservative heart on display there? Straight ahead. <laughs> 